A poll yesterday had the Tory lead over Labour down to a puny three points. Nothing like enough to win the next general election. So why are the Tories not doing better? Has Call Me Dave Cameron really got the right stuff to see off the great leader? And even if he has, are we any closer to knowing what he would do if he did win? We took journalist Peter Hitchens to the home of the Cameroons. No, not that little place in Africa, but Notting Hill in West London for his take of the week. This week, a discredited government pretty much became a dead one, foundering on Northern Rock. And this from the people who brought us the stupidest war since Suez, failed completely to control our borders, and also failed to do the things they promised from the start, to sort out education, crime and disorder. A proper opposition would have them on the run, but not this lot. Cameron's Notting Hill strategy rightly assumed that millions of people hate the Tory party. He tried to solve this, first of all, by changing a lot of policies that many of his own hardest supporters really rather liked. Secondly, by trying to give the party a new image. It's not going to work. There are millions of people who'd rather tan Tory their grandmothers than ever vote Tory again. I think a real opposition ought to be furious with this government and the way that it's betrayed the honest people of this country. David Cameron has no serious differences with Gordon Brown over any major subject, which is why the political debate in this country is reduced to futile arguments about competence and sleaze, which actually have little or nothing to do with the future of the country. Conventional wisdom still says that the Tories are bound to win the next election, but I can't see how that can be short of some wholly unforeseeable cataclysm. It looks to me as if the Tories are going to lose the next election. And the one after that, and the one after that, and the one after that. Peter Hitchens in Notting Hill joins us in our even more fashionable studio in Westminster. Welcome to this week. It's nice to be somewhere fashionable for once. Exactly. It may not happen again. Now, Michael, aren't you worried? Shouldn't the Tories be doing better? Well, I... I've always said I don't think the Tories will win the next election and uh, I've always agreed with Peter that the Tories are not nearly far enough ahead in the opinion polls. Uh, I think they would have to be substantially further ahead. Several factors, you know, the Tories need a much bigger percentage of the poll to win the election than Labour does and also the government normally closes the gap with the opposition when you're approaching the election. So even when the Tories were getting 42%, which is roughly what they need to win the election, that is not good enough because you need to be miles ahead. Uh, wh what I don't agree with Peter about is, I, I think, his view that if the Tories were to move to the right, they would be more successful. Um, well, that's not actually my view. No. OK, what you said in that film just now, and maybe I'm going too far, what you said in that film just now, that the, the opposition should be expressing the anger of the country with the opposition, I think that is true. Uh, and I think there is a lack of passion about the way that uh, the Tories are expressing themselves. But there's also a lack of a narrative. If you take the big running story for five months, which has been Northern Rock, in which uh, critics have said the government's been all over the place, um, and accused it of ditherism, well, you could accuse the, accuse the Tories of the same thing. The Tories, unlike the Lib Dems, have had no consistent narrative by which to attack the government at its most vulnerable over Northern Rock. I think the Tories have, have moved forward in several ways. First of all, they had no narrative whatsoever against Blair, whereas they have a narrative against Brown, which is that he's incompetent and that he dithers. They had no idea what to say about Blair. And that is for the Tories' big step forward. And in economic policy, there are two areas in which they got ahead of the government. One was the non-domicile tax issue and the other was the inheritance tax issue. But it's true that on Northern Rock, they haven't really been ahead of the government whereas Vince Cable, for the Liberal Democrats, uh, called it, that's the expression, he was willing to stick his neck out, he was willing to say what he thought ought to happen. Which torpedoes the whole Tory suggestion that they would be more competent than a Labour government, which is almost all they can say, because they have no substantial political difference. But the problem is not, Indeed. Michael, is not that the, the Tories could win by being more right-wing. The problem is that they are the Tories and that even if they came up with a selection of policies that most people loved and even if they could demonstrate that they were economically competent, which they can't, people still wouldn't vote for them because they are the Tories. And the real trap that they're in is that they are a ghost brand. 
uh, like uh, I don't know, capsed in full strength cigarettes, you, you can still market them to a, to a dying n number of people who will carry on smoking them until they go to their so graves. They die but even they will not quickly. After Indeed, capsed but uh, the, the Tory Party doesn't, as far as I know, have that effect on its users. But it, it might as well do. It is it is not a, an organisation with a future. It, whichever way, whichever way, whichever way it turns, it loses as much as it gains, and and, it, and it's, it's it's stuck with that, and it's it's stuck with that not because of its policies, not because of its personalities, not because of its image, but simply because it is the Tory Party. Another opposition, which actually espoused serious, different policies from from the current government, could take a large number of Labour votes away. The Labour Party is tremendously vulnerable, in, uh, especially among its, its, its working class vote, which is baffled by a lot of what goes on in the name of Labour these days, Le but I, not to the Tories. I, 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 th I think, you know, I, th th that makes super copy. It's a, you know, a really interesting column, but I don't More think... More interesting than yours? <laughs> no, I don't Possibly. think so. I don't think Thank so. Thank you, I don't, I, don't think, I don't think the assertion um, is well supported. I mean, the evidence we have so far, it is perfectly true the Tories is only three points ahead. But on in the, the other... In the latest poll. In the latest poll, yeah, in the latest poll. The average and they, is higher. And the, and the average is higher. And, you know, at the last election, they were uh, three points behind. So they are doing a lot better than they used to. So I think the evidence that you say that this is a brand that could not possibly recover, I think that evidence is lacking. Uh, I mean, it seems to be... I think they're still devastated. No, no, they're, 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 they're still devastated right. in, in, in large parts of, of the country. There is they a third member of this panel, and I'm going to bring her in now, if the two of you would be You've so kind. You've been so quiet. Her name is Diane Abbott. Well, she doesn't want to intrude into private, private grief. Exactly, this is private right, grief. ...wing as her argument between each other. But how do you read the polls? I mean, do you really take satisfaction as there's not still a fear on the back benches that, however inadequate the Tories may be, this government's on the skids? First of all, I, it was always going to be statistically very hard for the Tories to win outright next time. You know, that, the, the figures and the type of majorities they have to get, the sorts of seats they have yeah. to win in one go, they were never going to win outright. And um, what... If I, I mean, not for me to speak for the Cameroons, so, I mean, M Michael, Lord Portillo, I might say, is closer to them than I. But uh, what they're trying to do is sanitise the brand... You know, and then make a push to win, win outright. Maybe the election after next, and it is still possible. Actually, a lot of us think that we could have hand parliament or yes. a very small majority. Well, indeed. Now, here's a thought, though. Maybe the polls are not a great guide these days of what people really think. After all, they've hardly proved to be a great guide in the American primary elections, where they've managed to get just about every primary well, wrong. Well, that's a separate question. It's very yeah. difficult to do a proper poll in an individual state at short notice, which is the mess they always get into. You think the polls here are accurate? The, poll, the polls here are, are, are accurate in one way. They, 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 they have a huge problem. They all have to leave out, before they come up with their final figures, between 34 and 37 percent of the electorate who won't say how they're going to vote, say they won't vote, or say they don't know, which but is... Historically, incredibly there was always a phenomenon high. in the 90s of people who actually intended to vote Tory not actually saying oh. it. So right. I wouldn't... Let's move know. on from the yeah. polls, because none of us really know whether they're right yeah. or not. What issues, in your view, would breathe life into the Tories? If they were to have, if, if they were to have the nerve, for instance, to declare in favour of national independence and say enough of this rubbish about referendums and European constitutions, we're never going to get free of the European Union's embraces until we leave it. If they were to say that that was the foundation for a series of other policies which they would then be able to pursue unhampered by, by outside interference on everything from immigration to crime and disorder, then I think they would get some, some, somewhere serious. The fact is they're constitutionally incapable of that because their own record ties them so much to the European Union. And indeed, many of their own policies are responsible for the, for, for the decline in, in, in order. Right, give, me some, another, give me another issue. Well, I think, as I say, crime, disorder, immigration, education is important to a lot of people. If you put them all to, Europe alone won't do it. Immigration alone won't do it. Crime alone won't do it. Education alone you won't think do it. But if you put them all together, if you had serious conservative policies on those, and you said actually we're quite in favour of maintaining the married family and making a welfare state that that actually that actually looked after people who were in trouble yeah, but, but didn't UKIP, pay people to do UKIP nothing, UKIP you get program. somewhere. No, UKIP, UKIP, UKIP has that. Yeah, I, UKIP, UKIP is, is is trapped by the, it's it's a, it's a dad's army party. It's a blazer and cravat party trapped in the in the southeast. It has you know, it will never break out of that mould. When, when Margaret Thatcher was prime minister and she'd been. Prime Minister for uh, eight or nine years at a time. I was in a group called the No Turning Back Group when we were kind of young Turks in the Tory party. And we put to her... A so long ago. We put to her a modest proposal for reforming schools, which about three years later she picked up and they were really city technology colleges or city academies today. But when we put it forward, she thought it was a bridge too far. And she said, why don't you lot grow up? 
You know, this, these are policies that I cannot possibly get through the electorate. This is Margaret Thatcher speaking. But, and I say to Peter this evening, grow up. You know, well, these are not policies that are serious parties. Your strategy is not, not going to win anyway. the Tories the election. You've just admitted no, that. But so why not but, a bit of Peter's old time religion? Because we've tried all that stuff. Have, where were you when the last three election results were declared? In this well, studio. Yeah, exactly. And you know what? <laughs> my, <laughs> but, Michael, I mean, Michael, I've Michael, got a film out on Monday where... Yeah. William Hague and Michael Howard all say, you know, at last we recognise that the only future is on the centre ground. And for you and Simon Heffer and the other people who are left out there in the boondocks, I say, grow up. This is, this is myth. Final word. This, this is myth making. The Tories never actually pursued anything like a consistent or, or, or heartfelt right wing policy. And in any case, they were the Tories. It didn't matter what they did. People hate them. They're not going to vote for them, however wonderful their policies are. And their policies were not wonderful. It's a myth they were right. The last time I heard right. no, no. it hasn't been no, tried. We, we heard in your opposition. I heard, it from, I heard it from Tony Benn on the left. And it's oh, the same thing. When, today. when Michael oh, right. Patillo quotes, Tony Benn, we know we have to move on. <laughs> He's grasping at straws. Peter Hitchens, thanks for joining us. Good to see you again. Come back and see us and continue this uh, friendly argument. I'll wear my helmet next time.